<laughs> all, right, all right, guys. Welcome to the Live Well Tuesday Nighters. Our very first uh, Tuesday night Live Well here where we are going to cover all the aspects of fishing that does not occur on the big lakes with the bass guys. So I had a lot of people reach out to us saying they wanted us to cover crappy, stripers, electric only kayak fishing. This is what we're going to do. So glad you guys could join us tonight. If you're watching tonight, hey, we appreciate you. If you're watching on YouTube at a later date, we love you too. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Click that notification bell. And, uh, of course, the show is going to be driven by you guys as the uh, comments come in. i got three great hammers here I'm going to introduce to you in a second. But first, let's take care of our sponsors uh, that make this show possible. So the first one's Opson Floro. You guys have been watching on Thursday nights. I've been talking about Opson for a long, long time now. Out of California, they were in the uh, Floro game for tuna fish. They're now jumping over into fresh water. So go check them out at opsinusa.com. If you type in FNG, you get 20% off. I fished with it. Some of the guys around here fished with it. It's absolutely a superb fluorocarbon line. So opsinusa.com. And next we got our buddy Trent Palmer and Sonar Pros. Guys, if you want to get your sonar installed the right way the first time and take it where the pros take it, you got to take it to Sonar Pros. So 770-530-4500. 05 by appointment only. So if you're going to pay the money, use the best right there. Sonar Pros. And then we've got Lipsticker Fish and Kevin Underwood. Guys, if you follow the group page, every single day the man is on fish. But he also does a lot more. He will teach you your sonar, everything. Take him out. He'll put you on the big ones if that's what you want. If you just want to go catch fish, he'll do that too. So LipstickerFishing.com. Check him out right there. And then we've got Evolve Rod Sleeves out of Texas. This is the best rod sleeve I've ever used. So it floats. It's got a lanyard that hooks onto your uh, reel so it won't fly off. It's got a protective rod tip. And the best part about it is hooks do not get caught in this material. So Evolve Rod Sleeves, check them out at evolve.com. And also now we got Festive Waters off of Highway 369. If you're in the kayak game, paddle sports, Nathan and the guys over there will set you up. Hey, if you're into the fishing, they'll set you up with one of those boats. I think they even rent boats or paddle boards and Whatever it is, you do that kind of stuff, Chris. You get into the pot up stuff. No, That's no, not no. my game. But hey, if you're in it, check the guys out at festivewaters.com. And then, of course, you can see the sign over the back of my head Turner Tire. If you're into, uh, get, if you're, in, I was going to say, if you're into the paddle sport game <laughs> like that, if you're needing tires, you want a good family local business, Turner Tire up here in Jasper, Georgia. Brock and the guys up there will do an absolutely A1 job. Give them a call, 706 253 3339. And, of course, my favorite of all the sponsors, Etowah Mead Beer and Wine out of Dahlonega, Georgia. Tonight I am drinking the Mead Arita, which is a margar margarita-style sparkling mead. So they got a very big selection. If you go up there, check out the Happy Camper. That's all I need to say. Check out the Happy Camper. You'll leave there happy. I promise you right there. So with that, I'm going to introduce uh, my star-studded panel of electric only <laughs> anglers tonight. That's what we're going to start off with tonight. Electric only fishing is something that I've uh, been a part of for a while. And these guys are some of the best. There are some amazing anglers in the electric only world and they will rank right up there with the best of any lake. I don't care. I know these guys can catch fish. So to my right, we have Mr. Chris Gayton right there. What's up? That's my smile. So that beautiful face <laughs> to my left, I'm going to call him tiny because I did not realize what a big human being this fellow was right here. Justin Donaldson's in the house right there. Look at that. Well, you look good for your debut right there. Right. Beautiful. Look at him right there. And then, of course, take over, it take it all in. Take it all in. I mean, listen, <laughs> if you're here in person, there's a lot to take in right there. He's a big man. And, of course, on the end of there, we got Michael Geiger. So uh, if you're in the electric only world, you What's know these on? names. huh? So what's going on? What's going on? That's right. So uh, anyway – you guys in the comment section, appreciate you joining us. Uh, you guys, hey, listen, questions. You know how this show gets who's <laughs> done. Who's the best out of these three? I think we'd all say we are. I, that's exactly right. <laughs> I will just let me say it this way. It's every Saturday. They've all took my money. So listen, I, you know, I I have to be in here with them. So I'm not gonna tell you. Hit me on hit me on Facebook. I'll give you a, a private answer right there. So Carrie Bell, what's up? All you guys listen. So you know, Georgia, especially North Georgia, has some of the best electric only small water reservoirs around. And, and the electric only, I would say, phenomena has uh, really blown up over the last 20 years. I know it's real prevalent up north. They've been doing it there for a while. But down here in the south, they're building these lakes and, it, you know, it has some amazing fishing. And you can pretty much 
any species on these lakes. If you're a crappy guy, you can go to some of these lakes and catch some monster crappy uh, brim, catfish, but especially bass. Some of them have spots in it. Some of them are just pure largemouth lakes. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about these lakes. We're going to talk about these tournament trails that these guys participate in. And again, as your questions come in, we will, uh, other than the uh, who's the best question, because we're not going to answer that, we will just um, delve through that and try to give you guys um, a little taste of what's going on here in North Georgia. Now, Justin's probably more familiar with the South than, than the rest of the guy. Well, you all are familiar with it, but he's, you're Flatlander, right? You're from the South. Where are you from? Right, yeah, we're flat feet. Flat feet. But <laughs> where, where are you from? From uh, Conyers. Conyers. And who do you fish with? I fish with my brother, Jordan. Yeah, and Jordan what trail? Um, with EFS. I fish some high voltage. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a couple other small trails. I might hit a tournament here and there, but that's that's pretty much the primary. High thing. voltage has been around a long, long time. How long has high voltage actually been a club? Probably since the early 90s. I yeah, started it's, fishing it's, with them in 04. Yeah, it's been around a long It's Was it the first? If I, not one of them. Them or maybe Dahlonega, or not Dahlonega, um, what was it? What was the uh, JBA, John Boat Bass yes. Association? Yeah. Yeah. Which is not in there's existence. There's some old anymore. videos out now, there. There's several trails that are not in existence. Um, Southern Southern John. Southern John boats, uh, Dixie John boat anglers. Yep. Yeah. Um, but high voltage, that was the trail that I fished my first tournament that I ever fished. And I won that tournament. Hey, by, me too. <laughs> by some amount of luck. <laughs> Which one me was too. that? That was at Black Shoals. At Black Shoals. And so that, that there's an example of the lake. And that lake's down towards Conyers, right? Or yes, in that in area. Conyers. In Conyers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not my favorite lake of the ones that I've been on, but you guys love it. But anyway, guys, like I say, if you got any questions that you want for these guys, throw them out there. But I think we'll start the conversation off again, just introducing everybody and in and in, in what they fish. So, Geiger, what do you fish currently? As right far now as for electric, I'm just fishing the electric fishing series north. Okay. Every once in a while, we might jump in one here, there. I've fished a couple, one or two high voltage last few years. Right. Uh, used to fish EBO. I fished SWAT in the past, fished high voltage for years in the past. Yeah. So. Real quick, tell everybody what the electric fishing series is. So the electric fishing series is a little bit of a higher end trail um, as far as entry fees. We've got sponsors um, paying, not product sponsors uh, and and money sponsors that right. um, goes towards the classic payout of the boat. Uh, the boat we have a boat build that we're giving away last year. It was to the angle of the year. Justin won it last year. Add, yeah. He was our angle of the year last year. He won that. Uh, this year we have two divisions, so giving two boats would be a little difficult. So yeah. we're we're now having it the winner of the classic. Got to qualify for the classic. In years past, everyone made it. This year, the top ten from each division makes the classic. Right. Winner of the classic two day tournament will win the boat. That's awesome. And, and you and I were kind of talking, and I, I forgot about you. I'm gonna get to you, but you and I were talking <laughs> uh, before the show, just so people would kind of get an idea of value of what he won. Just monetary value with that boat and everything well i mean they're you said it you said it was nice it yeah <laughs> it's probably the largest payout ever it, it, it was the only term yeah it in. was you know everything in it's north of 20 grand see that's amazing that, that shows you how far this has come uh donnie boone this is year 32 so that's high voltage 32. right there right so what did that be 92 no, yeah That'd be I'm not a math yeah, major, yeah. so you guys got to do that. So we figured uh, up a uh, retail value of everything on that boat would probably be around twenty-five to twenty-seven thousand. That is a yeah. nice payday. Come a long way, ain't it? Yeah, it's come a long way. All right, and so Chris, you know, you've been on the show before. Yep, it's been a while, yeah. but you but you're back on it. Let's tell everybody what you're fishing. Uh so last year I fished EBO and EFS. Mm -hmm. This year. Uh, my wife's watching. I apologize. I said I was going to fish one trail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, started out with EFS, um, Dusty Diamond, uh, runs mm -hmm. Extreme now. Uh, he took over for Jeff and um, he kind of mirrored the trail. So I'm using that as a pre fishing yeah. for the EFS. Um, then I jumped in SOS last week, mm -hmm. <laughs> first time fishing Bear Creek. Um, and then Saturday, I went to pre-fish at Latham yeah. and Extreme with Donnie Boone. Put on a great trail. Uh, puts on a great trail. My first time fishing with him and his group. And 
it was it was great. So we fished. Uh, so now now I'm in four. So you lied us. to your wife. Is what you're saying? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. It, it it wasn't meant to be that way. Yeah. It, <laughs> well, it never is. So let's pull up our first question. I guarantee you, we're not going to get an answer on this one. Uh, Dustin Diamond wants to know what is Chris's favorite bait and color at Latham this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> let's just jump right into it. I mean, oh, wow. listen, Latham, Dusty, listen, I just I just Latham's in my front yard, so you can't lie to him. I got an idea. Man, they beat me Saturday. So they did. That's a better question for Dusty. Dusty, put it in the comments. What yeah, was y'all right throwing? There. Yeah, really. You know what? What I think, um, <laughs> honestly, though, Latham is one of those lakes that when somebody comes in here to the shop and they ask me how to fish Latham, I ask them, "Have you fished Lake Lanier or Alatuna? One of those type of lakes? Whatever you do on those lakes, you can do on Latham." Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's and it's all seasonal stuff, right? Yeah. So right now, the bass are in that transition period. They're moving towards the spawning areas they're in they're holding up uh, you know close to where they're going to be spawning water temperatures on the rise days are getting longer mm -hmm. um yeah for sure yeah you know, th there's a it's really fishing the conditions and i have confidence baits and that's what i tell everybody i think i've told it before on this yeah, show I, I, yeah. for me it's all about fishing what you're confident in fishing mm -hmm. um whether you're fishing shallow or you're fishing deep of course, right now, I think it, you're, you're going to fish are all over the place. So I caught two weeks ago, I caught fish in 38 foot of water on the bottom at Latham and I caught fish in two feet of water. Yeah. So it, it's, they're, they're really spread out this time of year. Which is that's just like Lanier right now and these other yep. lakes like that. Yep. So, um, do y'all fish the standing timber on Latham? And if so, with what now, any of you guys want to jump on that? And we do. Yeah, we fish it, but I we like to fish on the shallower side of the standing timber. And typically, how we fish it is a Texas rig. We'll get a some sort of creature bait Texas rig. Right. <clears throat> I don't like fishing it deep. I haven't had a ton of success. Sometimes around the edges, like the outer edges of the timber, especially if it's related to a point. Yes. Drop shot and timber deep. Mm -hmm. um, but I prefer if I can to get up into the timber get in the middle of it and dragging some texas rig that's what we like to do that's what that's what i would say that I, if i catch fish on the outer edges of the timber generally there's some bait there's you know there, it's right mm -hmm. there but if no bait's present you're going back that's what i do it is a little sketchy sometimes because a lot of those treetops have fallen off you got a lot of stumps underneath now but i like getting in there shallow get hung up a lot but i like getting up to show i throw a jig a little more than than that but that's a that's a good tip i might throw a worm the next time Justin. what about you yeah he, he showed yeah, out last you? year you I actually um when we fish timber i prefer to throw a drop shot mostly really yeah drop shot and um when we're fishing open water which is what i like doing more there i like to throw a swim bait yeah you, can, you can't go wrong with the swim bait out there uh gps coordinates if no baits no you know no <laughs> that's from that's from the, the audience out here but i will tell you this that that is the thing, though. If, if you are comfortable, like what you said, if you're an open water guy, Latham has it. You yep. can do it there. Yep. If you are a bank beater, you can do it there. Pretty much everything goes. Now, whether that works that particular day, but you can fish your shrinks. Yeah, so it, it does have a lot of grass. Yeah. So that's one thing I will say. That's It's, it's gotten more prevalent in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of that grass is taken over. You have to throw baits that you can keep out of the grass. A lot of times but yeah i mean i think uh um when y'all were talking about this show you had a picture of me holding a fish that was a latham fish yes i haven't seen one it. like that in a while yeah um uh, uh that seems to be i think covid done a number that on the lake, lake was very busy it was, it was and very busy it, it was busy throughout the week got a lot of pressure mm -hmm. Um, most people working from home or working from the lake, I guess you would say, I don't know how they were doing that. Cause there was no service on the lake and most of the, yeah. most of the lake, yeah, there's, there's, no there's, service. Nothing. there's nothing once you get up, but that, that was a, that was a big swim bait fish. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just haven't had a lot of success lately on a big swim bait in that lake because the quality of fish, there's not as many big fish as there once was at Latham. Right. They're still there. But yeah, yeah you used to it would take 20 something pounds to win a tournament yep. there. If you didn't have eight, it's like Lanier. If you didn't have 18 or 19, you didn't have a shot. I agree. So it's cyclical. Um, got a lot of questions. So Grant Asaski. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Sorry. I didn't see Jeremiah's. If you had to pick an electric only lake to catch a 10 pounder, which one is it? I'll start with you, Geiger. 
right now, 10 pounder, probably Varner. Mm -hmm. Old school, like Varner. If not Varner, this may sound like Hickory Log, my second choice. You know, I have more big fish, 10 plus pound fish I've seen over the last year or two have come out of Hickory Log. Now, you got to go through 8,000 little yep. ones, but some very impressive large mouth have come out of Hickory Log. That's right. Yep. And uh, what about you? I have to say the same, Varner. Varner. Yeah. Two votes for Varner. I think that lake's got a lot of giants in it. I mean, just old giants. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about you? Uh, that's going to be three. Varner. It's Varner. Right. So <laughs> last year in our tournament at Varner uh, with EFS, I jumped a fish off. And Tommy, uh, who I fished with last year, Kelly, is yeah. not one to get excited. He always undersizes fish. And that one had him pretty. Had him Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had him messed up. It was the biggest fish i've had in the last five years and i had it i had her to the boat yeah um twice right and the second time she just come on she just come off i mean it was just one of those huge. things let me tell you what i think is interesting about y'all's answers because i think the in that world in the electric only world small lake world rocky mountain always gets brought up but i think rocky mountain probably has the most seven to eight to nine pounders yeah but like what my, you said my <clears throat> my biggest electric has come from rocky mountain it has it has yeah but rocky gets not a, a 10 lot of, it was a nine five, nine the, biggest, five. the biggest i've caught on but rocky gets a lot of pressure it does it gets a lot of pressure so how is varner's pressure compared to rocky i think varner's pressure has lightened because of hard labor creek opening and a lot has taken the pressure off my opinion i've seen varner go up the last two years and get a little bit better getting not what it was before right. but getting closer for somebody that's watching that doesn't know where varner is where is it located? covington georgia it's covington. out i-20 there's three good lakes out there on i-20 you can hit they're all about 30 minutes apart you got yeah. black shoals and you got varner and then you got hard labor hard labor and hard labor being the youngest of the of right. ones so varner and black shoals have been around forever mm -hmm. uh how how how, how old is black it? shoals i think opened i remember we were in college in like 2001 sneaking in the back way and yeah. Got nailed by DNR. My friend's dad was a sheriff. Said, "Hey, y'all, let's go play at Rockdale County." And I right. came. We luckily we got off because <laughs> we, I, who we were. It. But they had just opened the lake. I think it was right around that time. Okay, Varner. Yeah. I'm not sure. May, exact. It seems 90s, like that old maybe. Patrick or, Rand, or Randall Kirkpatrick was posted on GON forums back either in the. I know definitely the 90s. It oh, seemed yeah. like big swing. I mid mean, 2000s. Mid 2000s. Yeah. Moose. 16 I mean, pounder. I yes. think the biggest he called. Uh, the grass era and swim bait era. Yeah. yeah. That's when that big swim bait era hit there. All right. So, Grand of Sasky. I do have one more oh, lake to throw okay. in if you got time. No, I got, we, uh, dude, we got all night. This is an old school one here. Uh, we don't fish tournaments there anymore, but Lake Horton. Lake Horton. I hooked one one time there that was probably between 12 and 14 pounds. Really? And lost it, yeah. Where is that located? That's in Fayetteville, right? Yep. Now, is that one of those lakes where you have county. to live in the county to fish? Not necessarily. I think you can buy a annual pass per person for 300 and something dollars, and then if you want to have a tournament, you got to pay like another $500, something outrageous, basically, and make it so you can't Make it, it so you yeah. can't, but it is possible. So, yeah, that's one that hasn't been on the trails, anybody's trails for – for a while for yeah. a while so uh, pressure. yeah well, there you go. <laughs> so this is i knew this was going to come up and so we'll start with you chris and we'll work our way around this way grant wants to know what trolling motors are y'all running elko's question mark and what's your battery setup like so for me i've got a e-propulsion mm -hmm. the e-175 mine's the navy 60 uh or the evo um and i've got the e-175 battery pack for the front trolling motor, I've got two hundred amp hour lithiums, um, and I'm just running twenty four volt Lawrence Ghost, mm -hmm. um, and then I have one accessory battery. Okay, so all right. What about you? Uh, we run twin Elko twenties, mm -hmm. E twenties, and we run high power batteries, uh, one hundred eighty amp hour. Um, they put out, you know, Elkos draw like one hundred seventy five ish amps right. and it's hard to find a battery that'll run those motors but the let's get over mic that big dog everybody wants to hear that beautiful the voice. e180s you know they put out 250 amp uh continuous current right so they're just very uh dependable and that way you never overheat the batteries um you know the runtime is incredible i mean fishing in tournaments we usually have 40 50 percent battery left when we get back Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. 
All right, Geiger. And I'm the exact opposite of these two guys. So <laughs> yeah. We are as old school and simple yes, as you yep. can come. And my personal boat, I've got one on which we don't fish very often out of. It's just I got a 24 volt. 15-year-old motor on the front and same on the back. Randy's boat, who we use for most of the tournaments, we've got two. We got a 36-volt and a 24-volt transom mount trolling motor on the back and one 24-volt on the front. And we got, what, eight Walmart batteries? Yeah. So I know. I know. <laughs> and, you know, that used to be the norm. It's what that we was still the run. norm. Everybody did that. So um, very interesting. Now, I saw a question. Let's see. What was next? Alan Pruitt right there. That's my cousin right there. If you were to fish Latham in a 12 foot John boat without any electronics and you've never been there, what would be your approach? Geiger, I'm going to let you start. We're going to work this way this time. If you were to without Latham any with, no, with electronics. no electronics, yeah. What time of year are we talking right Let's now? Let's talk right now. Let's, right now, yeah. I'd, I'd head to the bank and throw some, throw a moving bait and look for stained water. Yep. I mean, it's, you know, honestly, I'm probably not going to use electronics a whole lot in this tournament coming up Saturday. Right. Yeah. 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 That, that you can do that. What about you? Same. I mean, uh, can't go wrong with like a chatterbait um, or a swim bait, depending on water clarity. Just like he said, look for stain water. It, um, on a clear lake, that's right the mix of the clear and stain water is, mm -hmm. is usually where you can find yeah, so fish loaded up. You got to agree with that. Yeah, so so all, all our experts are in agreement. I will say this, that a lot of guys come in the shop that have never been to Latham. You can do whatever you want, but you always can just always throw like a white kitek, a 2 eight white kitek, and just – broadcast everywhere eventually you will run into something that will hit that steven ryan wants to know what size swim bait so the one that i caught um the, the one that's in the picture for this for this yeah let's go with that yeah yeah that was a six inch swim bait just a soft um soft plastic swim bait why don't you tell everybody the story about what you did to me in that tournament well, that was the same same bait. That was that was same bait, but just tell everybody we, what happened. So, <laughs> tell everybody we, we, what happened. We were fishing a tournament there, and Danny and them was out ahead of us. Mm -hmm. They run out, and we stopped. We short stopped where they were going, and uh, I mean that made it fifty yards past us, hundred right. yards past us. Right, not even that. And yeah. caught caught a six or seven pounder on a, on the same swim bait. The uh, EBO. Yeah, EBO. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, dro I, I know drove. What that is. I drove. <laughs> Josh and I were driving. We had a spot, and like we drove right over that fish, and turned right around. And I listened to this commotion, and y'all were sitting there fighting that fish. And I was like, I, I can't even repeat what I said, but yeah. that happens. And that listen, that was kind of what you're saying though. That was a shallow water bite with a big swim bait right there. Because yep. when well, you caught that fish, or your partner, which one y'all caught it? Was it Logan or you? Logan. Logan samples. That fish. That was less than eight. Yeah, I mean it was maybe even less than that. Five, six foot deep, maybe. Yeah, and that fish was six or seven pounds. Yeah, I, yeah. I ain't forgiving you for that. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that happens. Uh, let's see, what's the next one? Jeremiah's got a question going down too, right there. All right, here's a good one. What's the biggest bass all three have caught on an electric reservoir? So. Any, any one of y'all, what's your biggest bass? That was a 9.8 post-spawn. She'd spawned out. I mean, she'd have been over 10. If Yeah. That's – yeah, I think that's the biggest, 9.8. 9.8. Yeah. All right. I've caught three out of Varner that I say would probably be between 10 and 11. The biggest I've weighed was in a tournament. There was 9.13. 9.13. 9.5 9, at Rocky in late April. In late April. So I've seen now Hickory Log. Jesse Benson caught the one last year that on their scales weighed 11 plus in the night tournament that they had. And then I believe he told me that after he tried to release the fish and, and anyway, he had to come get it, but his uh, taxidermist weighed it at over 12 by the time he got up there. So I don't know what, you know, what scales, but that's still a big fish. So I seen a fish that I called Geiger. I literally I had very, little time to fish right i was going down the bank and i was throwing a buzz bait and a swim bait and i pulled up on a spot at hickory log and i had this giant fish follow the swim bait all the way to the trolling motor and i knew that she was on bed just by the way she was acting she turns around swims back over there and i sat there on spot lock I took my shirt off it's a nice day <laughs> and oh, i was roasted <laughs> right i mean it was like 
I had to leave by one thirty, two o'clock, and I'd forgotten I had my shirt off. And I mean, I was burnt. You paid bad. for it. I paid for it. You paid for I it. I did make it home, but this fish was the biggest fish that I've ever seen in electric in an electric only lake. Right. Probably the biggest fish I've ever seen, period. Right. Um, she was huge. She was uh, uh, twelve plus, maybe I, I don't know. You see, Wyatt's got that uh, Tim Wyatt's got that picture that one he caught in uh Latham. That he didn't weigh it. I don't think he weighed it, but that was a monster. So I think that fish was caught. Um, so there was a gentleman that went and got some trout uh -huh. from Hammonds. Yeah. Took them up there to Latham um, and threw a live trout out and caught a fish that he took back and weighed on the scales. I think, if I'm not mistaken, she was 12.8. Really? Um, at but, Latham or Hickory Law? No, it, it, it Latham. At Latham. This was at Latham. This was at Latham. Oh, it had a just a live trout, just live liner threw, threw her out. And, yeah. And caught a 12 8. That was on Hammond scales, um, their official scales. And then, you know, of course, the bass died, but that, yeah. got it mounted. There's a young man in here. He's kind of behind the behind the monitors over there. And uh, I won't call his name out in case he doesn't want any notoriety. But I've seen <laughs> several, several pictures of, let's just say, very, very nice large mouth that this young man has caught. Agreed. Uh, agreed. I wouldn't even say what lake, but, I, you know, but. There's some big fish in these reservoirs. Absolutely. So, uh, pull up Carrie Bell's comment. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll pull up that in first, and there's a question right above him. Uh, need to talk Mark into putting gizzard chat in Latham. Lord, with the thread fin and the blue backs, if we had a gizzard chat to that, I don't know if we'd catch any fish, man. There'd be so oh, much yeah. bait. So, we were just having a conversation around this earlier. Yeah. Um, the gentleman you were talking about yes <laughs> so, the young man yeah. the young man in the background uh, behind the screen whose name we will not mention yes so a lot of those my thoughts on it a lot of the blue back and a lot of the thread fin stay out in the middle of the lake yeah a lot of the uh, 10 months out of the year yes a big bass cannot sustain a, a bass over six pounds cannot sustain its weight eating thread fin and blueback chasing this bait off the spends too much energy. It does. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and there's not the brim are starting to come back, but a few years ago, six, seven years ago, there was a big brim kill. I don't know what it was. Right. I, they were just laying all over the lake. I think gizzard shad spend a lot more time shallow. And I think that that would a bass, a, a big bass could lay up behind a log in a standing timber shallow any kind of cover in the grass yeah. and eat these gizzard shad. That makes sense. That's the predominant bait at Rocky, is it not? Yeah, it gizzard is. Gizzard shad. Yeah. Yep. Rocky, if you don't, if you, you literally look for the gizzard shad to catch the fish at, at Rocky. Yeah. And, and so that, that contributes to all, all the weight right there. Yep. So what's the, y'all mentioned Varner. What's the predominant bait species? Is it gizzard? Yeah. Oh yeah. There are some that, giants. I'd say it's, um, I think there's more thread fin in there. Uh, there's definitely gizzards in there. I mean, there's gizzards up to two, two and a half pounds that I've yeah. seen. Um, but then brim, you know, there's plenty of shellcracker and and bluegill in there too. So there's also a lot of hybrids in yeah. Marner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess gizzard chad would be the the ticket if you wanted to feed those big ones up. You make sense. So they're staying out in the middle. So because that's what I'm saying. You can just go out in the middle and just chunk a kayak, and eventually you'll run into a bass. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I just don't think – I mean, like I say, the, the big fish cannot sustain their weight chasing small bait out in the middle of the lake, out in open water. It just – they expend too much energy. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Can't do it. All right, so I'm, I'm going to start this one with you, Guy. Actually, you ain't started one. We'll start this one with you, Justin. Pull that question up right there. If you were building an electric-only boat from scratch again, what would you invest your money in first, electronics, batteries, trolling motors, or something else? I would say it depends on what your goal is. Um, if you're going to be a tournament fisherman and you understand electronics, I'd say that's going to be your most important spend. Mm -hmm. um, after that, probably your your trolling motor source or your, your electric outboard batteries. Um, that's how I would go. Now, if you're just fun fishing, you like to fish the banks a lot, I would say probably go with the motor and batteries and, gotcha. and building your decks and stuff. All right, well, you, would you agree with that, Geiger? Or yeah, what? I think that's a good answer. I mean, to me, you know, if I were to do all the main thing is get a boat that is stable and comfortable. I mean, if I had to do all over again, I wish I would have known that 
a modified V was better than a flat front and a 16 footer better than 14 footer. I get budget comes in into right. play, but start from there with a good hull and then build out. I mean, obviously you can tell we're still running trolling motors on the back. So I would probably lean towards electronics next on that. Yeah. Some of the trolling motors are pushing just as fast as some of them uh, more expensive outboards. Yeah. There's some good ones out there. Yeah. What about you? No, I'm saying same. Uh, electronics is obviously that's to me um, figuring out how to get some good maps of the lakes. Mm -hmm. A lot of these lakes don't have good mapping. Um, there you can, you have now see maps for Lawrence. You have, uh, you can go to their, download their maps and upload them onto your graph. Garmin, you can go through the app, outline it, and you can have the community maps. Yeah. Um, that, and then, um, something I don't even like bringing up because it's a, such a big debate now, but we ain't going to get into <laughs> that. But the forward facing sonar is, yeah. is definitely. We talk a, about that on Thursday nights. We'll, yeah. we'll leave it there. Yeah. So yeah, but, yeah. I get it. but I mean, it, it is. It's, it yeah. does help. No, it does. It um, does. And, and so does side imaging and so does 2D sonar. It and so does everything. But I would just say, and that's yeah. electronics is good. Um, I'm not a. I'm not big on speed. I'm, I'm really not. I, I think it's 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 more around comfort and fishability and then speed. Okay. All right. Good answer right there. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Pull up Evan's question right there. All right. Do these fish on the reservoir get up on bed early or later or the same time compared to Lanier? Any one of y'all? Water temp. Water temp is about the same. I mean, it's – I, I think what, once you get a stable water temp around the 60, 50, well, I've seen them in 50. I mean, it's it's really the same. I mean, it's it's all based around the water temp. Um, and, and it's pretty close. I know Latham's pretty close with Lanier. Now, you get these spikes. They'll, they'll heat up a lot faster. Yeah. But they'll also cool off a lot faster. I think you get that stable temperature. I will say this, especially I've seen this on both Latham and Hickory Log. They you'll find them on bed a lot later than you on some of these like yes. late May yes. and even first of June. I've heard yes. people finding big ones at Latham on bed. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've seen that firsthand. I've been late. Mm -hmm. We're talking in June. Yes, and I'm not talking. I know the 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 wisdom is always that the big girls move up first, the first wave and all that. But I have seen some giants rolling around playing. In June, I, in the back of some of them timbers. I think that's that water stable, that temperature stabilizing, because right. there is so much vulnerability. It's a smaller body of water. They, it doesn't stabilize as quickly as a, lot, a large body of water would. Yeah. So it seems like you got a lot of a lot of knowledge on Varner. Does Varner play in with more, say, the lakes? I won't say say Oconee Sinclair. I think it does. Um, water temp is usually close to the same within a couple degrees. Yeah. Um, especially with Sinclair not having the power plant anymore, you know, just natural water temps. I think it's close. Um, one thing about big fish, I believe they do get up earlier than a lot yes. of the medium sized fish, but I've heard from multiple people that the big fish actually spawn more than once. Mm -hmm. So they don't lay all their eggs in one time. So that might've been what I was seeing. They may spawn early and late, you know, they okay. stay shallow longer. Okay. That, that's, that's good. All right, so let's go on down. You guys keep them questions coming. You're making my job easier. Uh, here's an interesting one. Pull up Chris Day. So first, Geiger, I want you to tell everybody what the TEC is So for those that don't know it, and then we can go who's your favorite to win. The TEC this year? I don't even know who's all qualified. If Chris is in it, I'm going to have to go with him. He's won two of them. Yeah. Uh, are you I, qualified? I did. Oh, yeah. I qualified to through EBO, uh, but we're actually fishing a Lanier tournament that's got a – yeah, so I deferred uh, my he spot. Defer, he year. deferred his spot. So basically what it is is there's – how many electric major electric clubs are there that participate in that? Ten? Yeah, I'll go up my second pick then. I'll probably pick Daniel Nikolai if he's qualified. Nikolai, Daniel yeah. Nikolai, okay. Yeah, I'm sure he's double or maybe triple. triple. <laughs> so, yeah, so what – A lot of clubs. Yeah, so what it is is it's, it's a fishing tournament where uh, all the electric clubs that have been in existence for – you know, there's some stipulations to it. They send their top four anglers each year to compete in that – and this year it's on Lake Russell. So, That's right. Russell. So, that, that Russell. Anyway, who's your pick? Um, I've got a buddy that fishes Russell a decent amount. So I've never are. been there before, but um, he says there's big largemouth in there. You're qualified, right? No, I'm not fishing. You're not, you're not fishing? No. Okay. Um, 
I would say if Jonathan Combe is going, he might be a pick. He can fish. Power fishing could work there. I've heard of some areas in that lake that's got okay. some large amount shallow. So. Okay, so there you go. So we had a vote for Daniel Nikolai and then Jonathan Combe. So it makes sense. And Chris ain't going to be there, so you're off. So yeah, you're off. Nah. You, you can't win. So Destin Thomason, I'll be there. Michael Temples, what's up, guy? Congratulations, Michael, on fishing that BFL. I saw the pictures right there. Stephen Ryan wants to know, guy with the six cents hat, which ain't me. Who's got who's got the Chris? Oh, Chris. All right, Chris. His name is Chris. What is your favorite six cents swim bait? The whale. The whale. In what color? It depends <laughs> what color, on water. water. What color? Yeah, I mean water, water. I mean, the water plays a lot of that. Um, I've thrown them in green pumpkin, I've thrown them in white, I've thrown them in shad. Yeah. Uh there's it just it really all depends. But the whale, I like throwing that. This especially this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, core tackle has a new hook out that's got a uh, weight built into the hook that's uh it works really well with them yeah you can get them from uh four inch to six inch i think they even make them bigger than that cast casco makes another good one that's not just you know it's not six cents but is that their prodigy the bigger prodigy yep. yeah yeah the yep. big prodigy yep yeah those are good ones this question is for me and this is for all of you guys and we'll start off with you geiger if you had to rank the top four electric only lakes in the state of Georgia, one through four, what would yours be? And let's well, let's base it upon tournament tournament fishing. Man, one that I they just went to that I don't that I would throw in there, but not based on person. I'm not saying it's number one that you are talking one yeah. through four. Yeah, or just it, top it doesn't four. have yeah, just your top four. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. And one I've probably removed out of there. If I had to pick four right now, I'd say Bear Creek, Barner, Black Shoals, and Latham. Okay. All right. That's a solid. So a little more south. Cedar Creek. Did you say Cedar Creek? No. No, Bear, Bear Creek. Bear Creek. Is that the one in Athens? Yes. Okay. So the Athens, like, still. It's been kicking out some good weights. Okay. All right. What about you, Justin? Um, as far as everybody catching good weights fish, yeah. I would say uh, Latham. And then I'd say probably Bear Creek second. Um, Black Shoals third. And... I wouldn't throw Varner in the mix because it's very hard to catch fish there. <laughs> right. Okay. I got you. <laughs> um, number four. That's that's going to be a toughie. I probably just stay with those three. I don't. Just, know. Okay. Hey, perfect. That's fine. What about you? Latham's not going to make my top list. Okay. That's fine. Um, I want to say, and that doesn't surprise me. I figured it wouldn't make everybody's list. No. I. I if you'd asked this question. Five years ago, it would have been in probably my number one. Right. Um, but it's definitely um, – It's not down one. a little yeah. bit. It's down. So I would say um, – Varner. Varner. Black Shoals, Bear Creek, and Hard Labor. And Hard Labor. Hard Labor is down too. Right. There's been – it's been – it's it's fallen off. A good bit. It got a lot of pressure for a few years. Yeah. Um, big but, lake though. Yeah. That's a the big fish lake. is still. They're there. They're, they're just, there. Yeah. It's harder to catch. Yep. Uh, Karsten Miller wanted to know what local kayak fishing trails are there. I cannot name them, but I can tell you if you go on to the Fish North Georgia group page, those guys post. I think. Uh, good grief! If any you, I know there's a couple kayak guys watching. So you guys out there, put those in the comment section. Because uh, I do not want to pronounce them wrong or use the wrong GBKFL or whatever this. But that, Walt Doyle, you would know right there. Uh, I've caught bedfish in June on Latham. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you guys, uh, one of you kayak guys, throw that out there because I don't want to mess it up. Cedar Creek is a tough place to fish. It is. That That's one of the harder lakes to get. I've seen some good fish took out of it. But that's a tough one. I've only fished it a handful of times, and it's been a while, but it reminds me a little bit of Hickory. A lot of dinks, and then there's some giants. The mine, that's yeah. it, the giants. So, all right, before I get to the next question, I'm going to take the question I asked you and put it in reverse. If you had to pick one lake, one electric-only lake in the state of Georgia that is the worst lake, worst electric-only lake, you don't even need to put your boat in there, what would it be? Most of y'all aren't going to know this. Commerce Watershed. I know of it. I know. I know of it. I know of it. I've heard about that. What about you? I'm going closer there, Sandy Creek. <laughs> Sandy Creek. So, out there. What about you, Taylor? Taylor, a buddy of mine, calls uh, 
Hickory Log, that's the Bean River, but I'm not going to say that. Um, I'm going to say Dahlonega. Yahula. Yep. Well, Yahula, you, we I, just can't throw tournaments. I got two anymore. good things on both those lakes. It's funny. 15 years ago, I would have said Yahula was the best lake. In, in 2008, yeah. 2007, it, yes. it would have been the best lake. Yeah. Sandy Creek, it's funny you mentioned. The first tournament I ever won was on Sandy Creek. We caught six fish that day. We had three short fish and three six-pounders. I was there Were you there? Yeah. 18 pounds. Of yep. fish. I'm telling you, though, there was a day in time, though, Yahula, you better be coming in with some weight. Now, it's been heavily fished. There's still some giants in there, but not like it's heyday. That's my best. That's my where I've weighed my heaviest five fish limit in a tournament that like. I remember at, at, at Jonathan Bowen, we had a tournament up there, and everybody was weighing in their five fish for 5.15, you know, between five and six pounds. And here he comes with just tank. He had his poor little fish in the bag, and he had this one, I think it was nine, eight, nine, nine. They had caught, it looked like he could eat every single fish, and they're still in there, but that was probably a little more the norm in the area you were talking about, especially like five, six, seven pounds. Did you fish any of that when SWAT was first started? When I, didn't, I did not, I fished it, but not in tournaments. Okay. So I actually fished a couple of night tournaments over there where all the, the brush and all was still standing yeah. and everything. And That's I watched cool. a guy pull up, it was a three fish night tournament. Josh, you were there, right? You just waved. Okay, so – but he, Josh is waiting. He got the mic like Tim's got normal. But he was – he bless his heart, he was emptying his way bag in his boat. He pulled out one of like seven or eight pounds, and he dropped it over the side of the boat. He lost it. In the night tournament? In the night tournament. I was in – we won that tournament because that guy dropped Cause, it. Okay, that so we were there. Yeah, yeah. we had – it was. A, it actually got tough that day. We had like a four and a half and two keepers. Yes. And he lost the tournament. He was right next to – I think was, you might have been on the other side. Came out – Randy and I were just talking about this past week, and, and it cost him so, the tournament. So, so, yeah, I probably didn't know you as well back yeah. then. But, yeah, <laughs> I, that's just – that's my one business, Yahula. That and uh, oh, Keith White winning the tournament there a couple of – a few, I guess, years ago in January on a buzz bait. It, when we were at the Jimbo Seminar – and it was spitting snow, windy as crap. It was freezing. He hadn't got a bite all day. And for some reason, he pulls out a black buzz bait, and I think he had 15 pounds all on that black buzz bait oh, yeah. at the end of the day. So those are my two Yahula memories. You ever throw a buzz bait in that kind of weather? No. Threw a – so a funny story, though. You're talking about snow. We, we fished uh, – Danny Tinsley and I fished a, a tournament at West Point. This has been years ago, HD Marine. And threw a coleslaw uh, spinner bait, coleslaw colored yeah. spinner bait, double white blades. Had three fish. No, yeah, had three fish that weighed like eighteen pounds. Yeah, and lost the tournament to a guy that had four. No, he had five fish, but he had twenty two pounds and didn't even. We didn't even get big fish. You didn't get big fish. And uh, there was like six inches of snow that day. It got so cold we come off the lake early because we. I mean, we went down there. It went from like sixties to snowing yeah i mean a lot of it's snow. crazy some good fish have been caught in bad weather yeah. yeah so uh let's see cedar creek's a tough place to fish going on down okay jeremiah guys how does black shoals fish differently than the other reservoirs i can tell you for me it's consistently because i'm bad at all of them i did not like our, our tournament at black shoals but you guys seem to like that lake so either one of you guys it's my favorite lake to power fish i love power fishing down there and it and you can do it from I feel there's a bigger window to power fish. My best day ever in practice on the water came two years ago. And I, I mean, it was incredible and it was nothing but spinner bait and chatter bait. And it was late May and, uh, or mid May. Um, the part that other than maybe Latham and similar, you can't throw anything but a, about a drop shot or maybe a weightless. It is covered in slime. Yes. So it almost forces you to fish something moving or something up in the water column, whether it's suspended on top, something you got to, get above that grass and if you can get it dialed where you're just barely ticking or above it but you touch that grass you got slime all it over is your that was <laughs> na that's some nasty stuff what about you uh, same i like fishing power baits here um uh, it's got a lot of grass in it that comes out to nine ten foot on the edge and fishing the grass edge you, you can catch them in the springtime deep summer i mean it just gives you something to focus around and something to pull those fish off of you know with a power moving bait or even with worms just fishing edge i mean it makes it more consistent for you to find the fish okay all right you want to jump in that or that yeah i mean it was probably one of my least favorite lakes 
if you'd asked me this last year, I think we had the last two years. We a finished. month and a half ago, we yeah. asked you probably. <laughs> yeah, so we, we were terrible the last two years there. And this year we, we figured some stuff out. And a lot of it's around the grass edges. Learning um, those grass edges. Drop shots good there. Uh, outside of the grass edge or even or, in the grass even, even the though grass. when those fish okay. get down in the grass you can you can keep that drop shot right above the grass power fishing we yeah. had a couple good practices in, in power fishing okay so, all right there you go so grant we're still talking about boats here with grant yeah all right so any of you guys can answer this would an old bass tracker be a good boat to build out for electric only i believe all you guys would say yes yep absolutely you say yes, yes. that's, is that yeah, what that's you got? my boat is a bass tracker bass yeah, tracker 17 okay. foot all right, so Geiger, this is for you. I heard you mention Mod B is better, but what else makes a boat more comfortable, practical for electric only lakes? I mean, one thing having I like having a rod. Some guys don't have. We have a rod locker to be able to put. A, I mean, I'm the type of guy who brings a million rods, so if yeah. I can put a couple up, it's nice having that. I like to have an area where you can put have the fish. Some people have it decked across. My personal boat's that way because it's too small. Having an area to when you land the fish, keep them down in there so you don't have one flopping off the deck. That's a good point. I think that's big to have a, a drop down area um, yeah. and just something stable. So it's not, I mean, Chris probably has the most stable boat out there. His is a, a his is on, on that bigger side. I've been on it. What is yours? It's a 16. Um, mine's an 1860. 1860. It's a but, wide boat. Yeah. So it is, it's actually, it measures 19 too, um, but it is a Fisher Mod B um, yeah. aluminum boat. It's all decked in aluminum. I'm going to do some upgrades to it this year. I want to take the carpet out. I think for me, the older I get, the more that uh, sea deck and stuff plays, you know, it's all about the comfort. Yeah. So for, sure. for me, it's, that would be, uh, that would be it. a huge upgrade. My wife will like, like it too after a rainy day fishing in that musty basement. <laughs> so yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> Your point though, Geiger, that makes a lot of sense. You know, just, I haven't really thought about that, but have to have that low spot to put that fish down. I hadn't thought about that, but that's as, that's as good as any tip is out there. I mean, I lay in one of my boat. I got to keep it in the net. You lay it down, it's flopping. I mean, you only got to lift that big. It'll flop over yeah. and go in the water. That, that's good. I noticed, uh, let's see, Michael Temple's had a comment. Most of them are all largemouth lakes. I'm sure he's talking, maybe talking to somebody in the comment. But that is the one thing that does differ. Now, Latham has spots, but the majority of our big lakes here in North Georgia are spot-driven. And then you can go fish for largemouth. Whereas on the electric side, more of them are largemouth driven with the exception of, I don't know, what other lakes have spots in it besides Latham? The only one, I've seen a couple weighed in at Hickory Log. And I'm really surprised there's not more in there because of the proximity to both Alatoona and Lanier. And I also believe that if in low water conditions, I think the Etowah can feed that lake. I believe, and so I'm, not, I'm surprised there's not more spots in there. I might be wrong. But I think I had a conversation with Mark over at Latham about the the release from uh, Hickory Log. I believe it has the ability to pump back and forth. So probably it would make sense if they were pumping any out of the Edwall back into it, some spot fry or something could get into it. So yeah, that is a good point. Mm -hmm. But Latham pretty much is the only one that's got a sizable population of spots. Yeah. So everything's pretty much large mouth. Yeah, which is the opposite of all our big lakes. Uh, there is one. There is one predominantly spot lake that's taken over the one uh, Lucas, Lucas down in Macon. His okay. I've started fishing that when it pretty much when it first opened, and it was all. And I've only fished it a handful of times, but it was largemouth and went ten years out fishing it. And I started seeing everyone. You know, I know Justin probably been down there some of the high voltage guys. It's almost all spots. It's rare that you. I mean, you see a few largemouth weighed in, but it's what 80 yeah. percent spots probably they used to have some big large amount so let me ask you this population. which would you rather have in a lake would you have something like latham that's got both or would you like it to be just a straight large mouth like all you guys can answer that what would be your preference depends the time early in the year i like having both because i like to be able to target if a large mouth get finicky it's nice having the those spots to go to but you know, I fish big lakes too, so I fit everything yeah. around North Georgia's spot. So it's nice to fish the electric lakes and be able to target large mouth. Right, absolutely. What about you? I'd say if the lake doesn't have bluebacks in it, then just large mouth. Okay, <laughs> common I, denominator I got right you. Here. That is a common denominator. Agreed. You agree on that? that? I I do like the option, um, but I think to grow really big large mouth, you need less bait pressure. Yeah. So I, I think that's a that's a key right there. Yep. 
Uh, Randall Kikendall, new hat said, not yet. Not yet. We got them coming. Not yet. I will let you guys know. Trust me, you will know on the uh, official Georgia group page when we get them. Question for Chris. Why do you think Latham has gone downhill the last three to four years? Too much pressure. I got a – COVID. Yeah, co- I, yeah so yeah. – Literally COVID. I, I really believe – Oh, man. Man, it was like, you know, everybody working from home. That lake was literally full seven days a week. Yeah. Seven days a week, there was there was tons of boat on boats on the lake. There was a lot of fish being kept. Yes. Uh, Mark did a great thing when he, you know, asked that the largemouth not be kept. Uh, no bass being kept, period. Right. Uh, I think that's helped, but it's going to take some years to get it back. I mean, it just – it there was a lot happen. of fish in that three, four to five to six pound range that got took out of the lake. Hey, we we seen a guy coming out one day, and I and I'm not going to describe anything, but uh, Terry, which is he, if, if you, you know Lake, you know Terry. Yep, yeah, yep. He he's there to, you know, he, see everybody. He's there at the gate. He's, uh, but there was a guy or several people coming out in one boat one day, and uh, Terry and I walked down and. Just see how they were doing. I, I just took my boat out, and they had, they were trolling live bait, yeah. and they had a cooler full of largemouth, and had like three or four fish in the five to six pound uh-huh. range that were thrown in a cooler. Yeah, that's that is that's that's and not breaking any laws, but no, they were just doing yeah, that. Not, they, yeah. they were doing that, and and look, I, I get it, but. That that's tough on a lake. You can't you a, a, a lake cannot sustain itself doing that. It takes a it takes a long time to I mean to mm-hmm. grow a five six pound bass and even longer to grow a eight and ten pound bass. And yeah, in most cases, and you know every once in a while you'll have some that you know you hear biologists talking about these phenomenons where bass grow to ten pounds in three years or whatever. It's, but that's not the common. That's thing. no, and and that's not and I think it's a good common practice i mean if you want to keep some bass if that's your thing spots you know spots keep a few make spots. a mean taco yep they do spots taste better than large mouth trust me and they spots are, are are gonna they're a lot more aggressive they're a lot they're a lot leaner meat they're mm-hmm. a lot they're a lot firmer meat mm-hmm. uh and and, and that they they can take a lot more pressure than a large mouth can they can yeah, I agree uh, with that. that's it but yeah you're right i mean there was a period of time when that whole class of fish so from that three to six, and you remove that class of fish from any lake, especially one that's Latham's 340 something acres, full pool, yep. give or take a little bit. All of these lakes, with the exception of maybe hard labor, how, how big is Varner? How many acres is Varner? Uh, it's 900. It's a bigger one. Something, I yeah, think. so it's a bigger one. Uh, what'd you say? Hard labor down there, it's over a thousand. 13, right? 12, 1370. 1370. So, I mean, it's like a mini Carter size. I mean, that's much smaller than what's Blue Ridge. 3,000? 3, 3,200. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you half the size of, a, of a, one of the major lakes. It's mm-hmm. just big, but Latham and the other ones, they can't they can't handle that. Yep. Um, for the person – pull up Walton's real quick if you get to that. For the person asking about the kayak right there, look up Walton Doyle's uh, answer. I knew old Walton would give it to you. So, there's several of the uh, kayak trails uh, right there. So, Walton, I appreciate you, buddy. Hope you're going to be at ICAST again this year. We'll have some more fun. All right, so Dustin Diamond right there. Now, this I knew would come up. <laughs> this is the forward-facing sonar of the uh, electric-only fishing world right here. Have you all heard rumors about a 48-volt max coming to Georgia Electric Lakes? I think all the rumors that we've heard are pretty much all fishermen. I have not heard any lake talked about it. I've heard lake management mention it. Okay, so You have. I have. I've had that conversation um, in, in my take on it is look I, I don't i don't see a problem well there's never a problem until there is a problem right that's right that's so right. my my thing on it is is i think you will have some lakes go to that a 48 volt max but i don't think all lakes will right um so i think that's going to be a give and take um and I, and i don't know when that may be it may be it may be after you know, if something happens, obviously it's going to be sooner rather than later. I mean, an accident or, yeah. uh, you know, you, you hate to even talk about those kind of things, but it can't happen. I think it's just being responsible. Yeah. I, my only my only thought would be I'll get on smaller lakes that are privately owned watersheds. Yep. Like a Latham. Yep. 
those lakes were not built with the riprap along the water. So erosion getting into those lakes may, might not, but may you're thinking more along the accident line. I'm thinking more along erosion control. So here, here's the, here's the, here's my thought on that. A boat running seven miles an hour, eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour. Probably puts off a bigger weight, don't it? Probably puts off a bigger weight than a boat once it's on plane. That's correct. Yeah. So that, that, that's my thought on that. That That's my only, and, and that was my conversation. There was some stuff around that. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's going to be more around the safety aspect the safety. with the kayak. Because you have the kayaks out there. You got the paddleboard women doing the yoga now out there on some of these lakes. Have y'all run into that? Well, it's out there, man. I haven't yeah. seen them doing. I've no. seen paddleboard. No, I've there. Been, but you they take line a, up, do yoga, and paddleboard. Take a lake like Hickory Log over in Canton. Yeah, it's got this. It's got a very small, that narrow, narrow. From when you leave the boat ramp, the S turns is what I call it. It's it's narrow all the way until you get to the big water. Yeah, and that is a safety concern. Kind of like coming down out of Laurel Park on Lake Lanier. Big turn no, coming oh, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. kind of like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not a safety concern for me, but I'm saying for that that was brought up in in conversation and, yeah. I, and and i see that being a point i mean you're coming around a corner there's 10 kayaks lined up around the water or across the water because i have seen that there i mean right. a big group of kayakers come out and they're taking up from one bank to the other yeah and that's and they're not doing the kayakers are doing nothing wrong no you know, no no no, no. no not, not nothing at all right and and, and and the boaters are doing nothing wrong right it's just circumstance could possibly lead into something yeah. like that and it's already hurt us a little bit and one lake we fished there last year we fished um and we got mixed signals it was down at high falls and chris and i both were trying to contact them to find out the rule because it's a 9.9 .9 gas only but when they told him they said i think chris got an answer that we don't have a rule on electric so we just ran it and then we got a mixed signal after that tournament that saying hey look if it says 9.9 if it's above 9.9 on your electric motor you can't run it. But we also, everyone knows that a 99 electric is not the equivalent of a 99 gas. It doesn't matter what they say. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't run this. doesn't matter the what they say. So we, uh, yeah. we've pulled, we, we elected not to have it on schedule. And, and it's a shame. And I don't know if we do, like, I mean, Donnie been with high voltage. They've always gone by whatever lake rule is. If it's, if they're at Yargo or Stone Mountain or High high Falls, and if you got a 99 gas, then you can run it. And if you don't, then you're running an electric motor. So okay. maybe something we do down the road. I don't know. I hate to like start limiting lakes because if everyone has a 75 horsepower electric outboard and Latham and Hickory Log and Varner decide to ban them, are we going to not go to those lakes anymore? I mean, or guys going to have to do what they do now is have a gas motor, an electric motor, or have a 99 or 48 volt and maybe a big one or something. Right. You're running twin Elkos. Yes. Sir. So what's your thought about that? Um, I think it's more from probably a safety standpoint too, not erosion. I mean, the wind that you see on a daily Good basis point. is probably a lot bigger waves than what your boat puts off. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think erosion is really okay. a part of it. No, that's good. That's good. That makes sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jonathan Comby. Hey, how you doing there, bud? What's up? What do y'all think it'll take to win at Bear Creek Saturday? Who's fishing Bear Creek? Is it is, is South Division, yeah. South, South Division? Right there. All right, uh, give us a weight right now. We're going to hold you to it, too. Well, Jonathan, Daniel says 20 to 25 pounds. <laughs> mm. Seriously? That's what he says. Uh, I think realistically 18 to 20, out. but you could definitely see over 20-pound bag with no problem. Really? Yeah. It could happen. That's a sack. That's a sack. The conditions are lining up for it. At Bear Creek. It's so for those that don't know where Bear Creek's at, where is that at? That's in Bogart. Bogart, so close to right Athens. Near Athens, yep. Bear Creek, 2025. Yeah, it's going to take 20 plus. See, that's what I think a lot of people don't realize about these electric only reservoirs. There's some serious weight can be put out on some of these things. Everybody thinks John Boat when, turned. When that lake opened, you remember you guys remember that lake? They had that slot limit, everything. I was in I was in school in Athens and not and they they were doing the F1s and trying to make it a trophy lake and the 911 hit and they shut that lake down. You couldn't get on and everyone was itching to get out there they're worried about being a and i think when it first opened it wasn't 
it never really li- I feel now it's living more up to what they wanted it to be than when it originally opened. I haven't fished it enough to really say, but right. looking at the weights recently in more recent tournaments, it's starting to kind of kick out some pretty good bags. Now you mentioned slot limit. Does it still have that? I don't think I think it was it a minimum uh, or slot. You uh, may know the first few things. years it was a slot. It was um, anything from 16 to 22 inches. I think mm-hmm. maybe 24. Um, I fished a few tournaments there and, and it was just incredibly tough to catch a limit sometimes because the slot fish were so prevalent. I mean, you catch three to five pounders all day and you just couldn't catch one that would keep, you know, so we, me and my old partner, Charlie Dick, and we caught some big bags out there and had to throw them all back, you know, in the tournaments, just even up to six, seven pounders. (laughs) That would be awful. (laughs) So, um, the first year, I think it was the the slot limit was lifted. I fished a tournament out there and it was this time of year and it took over 30 pounds to win. And second place was 29 pounds. I had third place with 19. Oh, over 30 like, big weeks. fish was either 12 or 13 pounds. Oh my God. Yeah. Why the hell was that? Like, and it was, was probably, it was probably 24 inches long. It was a football. Was that Brandon Sanders? Yeah. Brandon right. Sanders. Good uh, night. Was, 30 pounds. And David Dude, Ruark won the tournament. I'm telling you, man. 30 pounds. I, I, the first time I've ever fished, it was last, not this last Sunday, Sunday before. And uh, I should have <laughs> had okay. over 20. I, 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 we broke a rod on one. Or broke The rod, rod broke. My partner had a bad spot in his rod. It broke, broke flying. And then uh, I broke one off at the boat that was that would have it would have put us over 20. 30 pounds. Well over 20. That's a sack. Some of these guys don't like like me don't get 30 pounds in a month. 30 pounds in a tournament. Bear, how come Bear Creek doesn't get more talked about then? Is it y'all keeping it all on it's the down? Clo- it's, it's, well, it's close. Part, I think was over March. And it's yeah, it's closed, closed some during winter. the week too. Oh, it? okay. And okay. then you can only fish okay. like uh, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. So. Gotcha. Oh, Patricia Smith. Hey, Patricia. I ain't talked to you in a while. Tell us all the secrets, Chris Chris Gate. And actually, if you would come up here and spend some time before the show and then after the show, that's when you get the juice from Chris. You got to do that. (laughs) He ain't going to say nothing on camera right there. So Uh, I got to tell you, I'll tell you all secrets. How about that? I've learned a little bit fishing with Taylor. From Taylor, absolutely. So uh, Donnie Boone says, I can see a 48 volt uh, max in the future, which uh, a 48 volt. Out, you know, and it doesn't matter what brand, that still will put you around that lake pretty good. 48 okay. volts, pretty good. Yeah. It, so, you I know, it hurts that. where, you know, like a lot of the electric trails, especially up in North Georgia, we're limited on the lakes we can fish. So, we've guys are going to Lanier and different creeks, right. and you're going to some are going to Blue Ridge or even Notley. That's where it would be nice. But, you know, we've tried to focus on the electric i mean that's kind of the goal but it is yeah. nice going to linear as good as oh, it is and it's listen, nice to have those it faster <laughs> electric outboards it is and I, I see it there but i think that's that's another thing too that some of these lakes are getting so crowded you're kind of forced to go to these lakes mm-hmm. to like linear and all that i love fishing it and our and most of the boats especially that young man that was uh talking about a boat build you will see on a lot of the trails now that they're fishing alatuna linear He's like that. So if you're doing that and you're thinking about tournament fishing, you might want to keep that in, my, in mind. You want to make sure your boat's capable of getting on those lakes, which most of them are earlier in the year, you know, this time. So you don't have the the uh, summertime traffic. I don't know if it would be so wise to do it, you know, like in July or something. So Yeah. Oh, this Lord. is a good question. You want to read it? You read it out. You read the question, Chris. <laughs> this is for Geiger. Yeah. How do you break down a, an electric tournament versus breaking down a fiberglass uh, – boat so your big late boat versus your small late boat yeah you prefer one style of tournament over the other well i probably prefer the electric i've done a little bit better than those i think two two things one that we have to consider that some of the other guys don't we're so slow we have to guess almost try to forecast where everyone's going to go absolutely and pick where we're going to go based on that absolutely and if we get on fish we don't move that was the key to I've told everyone, I said, with that Lanier tournament that we won, if I was in my bass boat, there's no chance we would have caught that weight. I'd have been gone. We caught – the minute run. we got to our limit, I was ready to go. And I said, well, we're going to – we decided – I was like, man, the wind's blowing. We're going to be slow, and I want to make a long run. And then we caught a five-pound spot, and I'm like, all right, we're not leaving. And we just sat there. But in my bass boat, I'm gone running around, huh. and that makes it 
I have a hard time staying put in the bass boat where the electric boat, I can stay put and fish. You almost have effect. to fish yeah, the yeah. spot. That's yep. why I tell guys the difference is in a bass boat, them guys come, they drop it, they hit the sonar. They don't see what they want. They're on up and going. So for those that, do that, those that you. didn't see that, what was your weight? In that tournament? Yeah. 2348. 2348 in an electric tournament on Lanier. Ask him what he caught him on. Uh, yeah, I think it was. I'll tell him what I caught tell him. Tell him what I caught him. Yeah. What the, the big fish. The big, the big fish, fish came on a true grit jig. Mm. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. We won't say the color, but yes. I just but I, I tell you what though, seriously though, when when you told me that, because actually you commented, we were talking about it, and I I assumed that the spots that you weighed in were caught on the jig, and you said but, that, and I was like I did not expect that. So, so we weighed I'm trying to think. We weighed three on the jig, yeah, and two on a crankbait that we weighed, yeah, DT ten. And that big fish was how much weight? Yeah. Seven oh six. And you know who I felt the worst for though is old Keith White. Oh, well, here's the funny part. Yeah, we're weighing late at uh, Black Shoals. He uh, he weighed in front of in front of us. He told us he said. We saw him in the parking lot. I said, what do y'all got? He said, we got 1510. And Randy scales all his way light. I said, we got 1488. I'm like, man, it's going to be tight. So they weighed in first and weighed 1510. We weighed in right after that and went 1509. I looked yeah. up. I was like, oh, my gosh. He looked over at us. He goes, we owed you one for that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, what, 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 did, what, did, what did they have in that tournament? They had 22 something. 22, 39 maybe. Yeah, like and that. then y'all came in, and y'all were one of the last ones to, to weigh in. Yeah. And he had 23. I, I, well, they we had, we met in the – we both were back early. I'm like, that, and we, we never get back. I'm like, Chris and I are the last we – run, we run it, and we're the last two in. Right. I wasn't taking any chances. And Billy and Keith were back early, and they started talking to us. And Billy looks at us, and he's like, thumbs up or down. I was like, up. Oh. And I said, what about y'all? He's like, man, we got a mega – he goes, we, we got more last year. It's going to take a mega bag to beat us. I'm like, man, it's going to be close. And uh, I said, y'all got 21? He's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, man. And he said, and I said, 22. Got, and I think he said 22 something. And he looked at us. He's like, what are y'all? I was like, we got 23. And you could just, and I felt for him. I mean, that, yeah. that's tough. I mean, that's, that's I, would tough, rather, I would rather know? get beat by 50 pounds than to lose. But Keith come up to the shop and we were sitting there and he was telling me about it. And after I said, I started laughing. I said, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Cause I, I said, tell me how it felt. Cause they would have had big fish too. So they would have had the tournament and the big fish, and then y'all came in and basically took both of them. Here's the funny thing about I talked about the big boat versus small boat. So we caught we were when I caught the big spot, that gave us maybe just shy of 20, 19, somewhere in that. And we had a spot further in the back of that pocket and a bass boat. And I was going on the bank. I was trying to let it rest because yeah. I didn't want to hit it too quick. And a bass boat pulled in the back, fishing an ABA or maybe one of Scott Barnes. I don't think Scott was fishing that day. I think maybe eight. And I watched him. He came across that point and wanted to hit, but he came burning by there on a crankbait, and we let it rest and pulled it right behind him in my first cast. And I pulled back up. I caught that large. You caught that. <laughs> yeah, man, it was a great fish like that. But I, I did. I, I said, I mean, like, Keith, like, I want to hug your neck. I feel so bad for it. And I was happy you guys got it, you know, because Randy was telling me all about it. So, uh, let's see. What do we got next? Uh, we probably, Oh, pull, hey, real quick, if you pull up, Mike, go up to the top a couple. Carrie Bell, we, we probably shouldn't talk about that, Dustin. What is that? What is it? What was Dustin about? What was uh I don't know. I just saw he said we should Dusty it. Diamond. Oh, it Dusty Diamond. Okay, about, yeah. Uh, 48 volt. Is that what it was? Is that what oh, it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carrie got him a nice boat. Carrie got him a nice boat. Carrie got him a nice boat. He got a, he got a nice ride. I've seen it. You can't miss it, can you? Got them old power poles and all that. So Michael Temples. Do some of the fast electric boats that go 15 to 20 have drivers wearing life jackets and kill switches? Could a person get a ticket for not having it? No, That's a no. good question. I don't think – I mean, I, they're fast tournaments all the time on Altoona, guys. It, yeah. Unless the tournament enforces it. That's right. I know most of that is yeah. – so Yeah. There's no rules around that. I mean, I can run a 250. I can run a 300 on a bullet running 90 miles an hour and not have a life jacket. Is it smart? No, but, <laughs> no, but, that's but right. it's not a – it's not a – Wow. I will say that some of the tournament trails I fished in, they have the rule if the big motor's crank, gotta have the life jacket kill switch in. But that's the tournament rule, not the lake. So if the tournament doesn't, they don't have it. I, I get yeah. that. So all right, Evan Frillany. You guys are making Frilliny. my job easy tonight, guys. Keep them coming. How much weight do y'all think it's going to take to win the tournament this Saturday at Latham? 16. 16. I was gonna say 15, 4, 5. So it'll be around 16 pounds. I I I mean I went I had Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I went up there and had a really great day. 
Yeah. Pre fishing had 18 and a half. I, I don't see it. I, I think. Yeah. That's the, the toughest right. part is that there's just so many limited areas. And when you, you can go out there and pre fish and catch 18 or 20 and you show up tournament day and you might get two or three spots and then you're, everything's used yeah. water. And so it's just, there's only so many to go around. I mean, someone could get, if we can get one of those kickers and it happened, did, you had a good one last year. And I think, uh, Clell and Chris had a good one yep. last year, but they haven't really been showing up. I the mean, kickers, that, yeah. I think four something was the big fish. Yeah, a big fish for the year that I'm aware of. I, there may not. I don't know. What did y'all yeah. have last year? Y'all had a we had uh, was, uh, six, like a little over six. Clell and then had a seven at Latham. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your guess for Latham? I know, I know you're fishing the south, but you've been on the like. What What do you think it'll take to win? I, mean, I think Gaten might have eighteen. <laughs> eighteen. Nah. Let me take. Give me, he's a I sandbagger. Think, I don't think. He I really. He don't. is the biggest sandbagger. <laughs> I fish, I, 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 you no. are the biggest. No, you are the biggest sandbagger I've ever met. If he says he had a great day, he probably had over. That's 20. why he's like, yeah, I did. Uh, uh, no, he, he said he had a tough like, day. Oh, yeah, tough tough. we day. came across some black shoals the other day. Oh, it's tough. I got sixteen and a half pounds. Like, yeah, real tough. We got two keepers. So. Yeah, yeah, but but so. The you know, I love story so behind I know, that yeah, is we had over 20 <laughs> on, on, on a practice day before that, and it was like, yeah. you know, it it was a tough day for compared to our pre fish oh, yeah. day. You know, it's like <laughs> he's, he is trying his best <laughs> yeah, to cover yeah. his ass. He is. <laughs> <laughs> but, Trisha but, Taylor, I need some backup. You don't need no backup, I know, but <laughs> but in a good way. I, I say that in a good way, but like if you say, Yeah, it's been a good day, I'm like, okay. A Chris Gaten good day or a Danny Pruitt good day. There's two different things <laughs> to, to what that is. So uh let's see. What's the next question or comment? How about pointer 100? I haven't recognized that, and it's down to right there. What happened to Rick Burns and his Southern John Boat Trail? I have uh, no idea what he's talking about. So. Justin, you want to take that one? Uh, I'm that not gonna about that? Details. Okay, all right. So there you go. <laughs> it's just not around anymore. It's just not around. So there you go. So that might be something that we have to talk about off camera. So there you go. I get it. Um, and I have no idea about that trail. So that'll work. Pull up Gabe Hammonds right there. What do y'all think the big bass is gonna be at Red Crest on Lay Lake? I live here and the bigs are biting. Whew, I hope a meal has it. But yeah, oh, that's right. He's in right. A meal's Did, there. He's Christie had a nine. Did he have a nine pounder on there a lot when they were there last year? I think Jason it, Christie weighed a nine pounder. It, it, I would say eight plus, but I don't know that lake too well. But they're also every fish counts. So that I mean, not to say they can't catch a big one, but that's not necessarily that's not the what they're concentrating yeah. on. Yeah. So I'd that's say somebody's gonna catch an eight. Okay. That's so sure. so let me ask you this. That that brings up just this is for me. I always have these thoughts in my mind. If you're fishing that style. And you know you can go down the bank and probably pop 10 one-pounders, but you see an eight-pounder on bed. How much time would you give that eight-pounder? Not much. Yeah, it changes your thoughts yeah. 100% on something like yeah. that. I, that that's the, I mean, I would throw at it on bed and see it, how it's reacting. Right. And, you know, but and the problem is once you start doing that, you get sucked in, and next thing you know, an 100%. hour is gone. I got it. Look, y'all are all beating up on me. I what? gotta answer this next question right here from Evan. Okay, do so that. I, I gotta, I gotta defend myself on that. <laughs> I apologize. No, he's so, not. I know a he's giving me example a, right there. But, so the last three fish that we caught that day, we never weighed. I just we knew that they called. Yeah, and we it was when he says that we fished to the last minute. I can't tell you how many times, literally the last 20, 30 minutes of the tournament. Yeah, it's. I mean. The the T the last T C at um hard labor. Right. We literally lost that tournament a hundred yards from the boat ramp in the last twenty minutes of the tournament. Yeah. It's it, I fish I feel like the afternoon bites, especially early in the year, are a better bite. Yeah. I fish it definitely turns on. I mean, I talked to Geiger when we were at Black Shoals, y'all had Y'all didn't hardly have anything at lunch that afternoon that turned on and you we saw him later and we weren't quite our final weight, but I passed him the second time and he's like, We got over 18. Yeah. And he had just and we knew and I knew he had because I kept looking at this point across the lake. I said, Who's that? Me and Rain are trying to figure out I was like that boat hadn't moved. And you know, when there's a boat that hadn't moved for a while, yeah. they're catching and we got up, Chris was sitting there. I'm like, Oh, he's cold. Yeah. <laughs> that 
You know I love you, but I still call BS. <laughs> I, I mean, I seriously, mean, I it's, still call BS. It, but we all do it. Yeah, when I get in a it's moment, a lot of times, it's sportsmanship. A lot of times too. If you get a, so for me, this is this is big. If I get a school of fish to fire, if there's eight, six or eight fish in a school, and I catch one, and I know it's going to call, and I know my smallest fish is call on call ball one. Right. I'll take that fish off, put it on there, and I always keep my my lowest three here. Yeah. One, two, three. I know this is going to be our first call, second call, third call. And we talk about it, you know, throughout the day. So if I call a fish, if I catch one that I know is going to call, I'll go ahead and put him on that call tag. And then I'll go back and weigh him because there's a lot of times I'll pull up. And, and if you get that school to fire, you can catch five or six fish and call your whole bag. Right. But if you take the time to do all that while you're, while you're in, the, in the moment, if those fish come to the boat, they shut down. I got you. Hey, listen, still take the sandbag. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get. I'm just playing with you. So, Eric, <laughs> Eric's uh, watching from a long ways away tonight. Pre-fishing tournament day, way different. Uh, <laughs> more boats and most know where they are. You know, are at. So it makes it harder. I, you know, that's the thing about electric only. And maybe talk about. We'll, we'll talk with you about this, Justin. Is like everybody goes in on certain lakes, and you know there are five spots that are like desire the most desirable and all that you kind of mentioned too as well that like you're a little slower than everybody so you kind of had to pre you know pre-think about where they might be how do you you know come across a tournament when you're fishing against guys you know the tendencies on a certain lake you know do you talk do you communicate with them say where are you going or are you trying to guess um for a starting spot i communicate a little bit with guys that are faster than me yeah um what we typically try to do, especially last year, and we had a lot of success with this, is just going out and spending more time pre-fishing and only finding fish that are not typical fish people fish for. Okay. Um, hit areas that nobody pressures um, and not even start on those areas. Like leave your good spots for later because you see nobody fishing there, so you know that nobody's going to hit it more than likely. Okay. That's so don't start on your best spot if you know that nobody's going to hit it. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, let your guys do talk a lot more than the gas guys, Eric. That's for sure. Gas guys, especially the ones from Malatuna, they do not talk. Well, I'll tell you one thing about the electric stuff. And this is, I mean, I've met a ton of people I fished with through it. You got these lakes that they have a set time, so it's daylight. You can see everyone where in a gas tournament, it's dark. You don't, you got a loud motor Good running, point. and it's harder to have those. Con There's a lot of conversations that happen on the water before blast off. Like Justin mentioned, you might. Say hey, well, where are you starting? Just to get an idea where you're going. Right. But a lot of a lot of conversations what are going you on right at? there. <laughs> you what? The conversation that day that we caught that fish, it just I brought that up. I broke my rod that no, morning. Well, you did. You sat on your rod that morning. And you did. broke it, and then you was looking at the screen at your at your graph, and you said, "Look, there's a fish right there." And you said, and Josh reached up there and wiped it, and he said, "No, it's bird shit." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's true. That's true. That that was really true. funny. That right there, that's a Danny Pruitt special. That's a, <laughs> I remember oh, that now. Man, I remember that. Awesome. that. I also remember Josh at Rocky. We were at Rocky Mountain one time, and I'm sitting back there, and I, he was at the front of the boat one day, and I'm at the back, and I'm looking there, and I start like, "The hell's that smell?" And I look back, and Josh has got a pipe. He sitting with a pipe <laughs> in the front of the boat. I'm like, what the hell did you do? <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was like, what in the world? I was looking around. Go, Josh. He's, he's burning the pipe up in the front. So we we have some strange oh, things. But man. yeah, that day that day was the day that uh I had a, had the NRX. I sit there talking yes. to you, and I had a I'd never even cast this NRX, and I had it leaned against my seat. And I turned around. I think we were getting ready to start. My fat ass just sat right down on it. Just, <laughs> pop, dude, you snapped watched it, it just yeah, snapped wow. it. I'm like, I didn't cast that thing. <laughs> yeah, he said, well, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> yeah. This is how my day starts. And then not not 20 minutes later, we drive over the spot and I'll catch that big fish right behind us. So that yeah. is that is how my electric-only world goes. But I, I'll say this, that uh, I find electric-only clubs to be more, on the most part, there's always your apples here there, but for the most part, I find them to be have a lot more camaraderie than big boats. Absolutely. I yeah. do think electric on, you know, because all all trails have your higher end guys that are really good, but most guys are kind of like me, you're just regular average guys that like to get out there and fish for fun. And there's a lot of conversations that you have and a lot of friendships that you have. And 
you make those that I, I you know, there are bass big boat clubs that have that, but I think on the electric side, it's a lot more prevalent. Absolutely. You know? So, I mean, I, I really do, you know, I don't know about you Southern guys. I assume it's the same way. We got Southern hospitality. Southern <laughs> hospitality. <laughs> uh, Kenneth Spriggs, let's talk about live scope. Uh, yeah, well, let's don't. Let's nah, don't. Let's not. I, I'll go ahead and tell you my – listen, I had a guy fussing at me on TikTok about it. But I, I just tell you what, you know what? Okay, let's do this. All right, let me let me let me change a little bit. Do you think that there is a limit that any of you guys that run electric clubs that you might ever institute where you can have just one live scope screen, <laughs> one this, instead of if a guy shows up and he's got eight or nine screens? Would you guys ever and he's just waxing everybody? Would you guys ever consider just say that everybody gets one transducer, one this kind of the, even the playing it, field. To me, it's either all or nothing. I don't care if you got gotcha. fifteen. Yeah. You, if you have one, you might as well have fifteen. Yeah, yeah. it's either you ba you say none or yeah. no. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and I, I mean I'm pro life. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind. I, I, me too, and I, and I'm the same way. I, I, I agree with Geiger 100 percent on that. It's either and if you want, hey, if you want to spend the money, go. You want if you want ten on your boat, go put ten on your boat. Yeah. I'm just going to fish a little further from you because it's going to mess mine up. It will mess you up <laughs> like that. But, but yeah, no, it's it's you know it's. I got you. Know I what's your thoughts, sir? Is you the quiet one? In I this mean, group? you're talking to the guy that's got two motors on his boat, so you know. We well, have two. Yeah, no, I, I no, He's I got get it. you. Got two live hey. scopes on your boat too, don't you? Yeah, we yeah. got two. Yeah. used by separate people. Then. Well, you got one on the front, one on the back, correct? So that yeah. the, and that is a trend now with I'm a lot of co anglers in some of these tournaments. They're bringing their own. I guess it's, is it more so the ice kind of. I, mean, well, I don't know what they're doing. I just I know that I know it was a, lot of a guys are big deal at the BFL regional at Dale Hollow last year because guys were fishing out in the hundred feet of water and the co anglers were all complaining and right. riping and right, it, you know, because they, they didn't have anywhere to throw. Yeah. So Kevin Underwood gave us a great tip. Was it two weeks ago? About that, did you was you watching that? Yeah, my co angler was talking. He's like, I hope I don't have to do that today with you on this past Saturday. So, so don't he, worry. He, here's what he that. said about that. I know we're we're, we're not going to get on the big lakes, but this was just a great tip. He said for that guy, especially if they're like on Lanier or something, and your your front guy is scoping timber and all that. If you know the timber is down, say thirty five feet, just make your mark on your uh, line or something, and just drop your to meet you or something at thirty five feet, and just hold it, and let that guy just kind of. Bounce you across that. Or tie a thirty-five foot leader. Or tie, tie a yeah. thirty-five foot leader. No, that's that's perfect. I mean, that makes sense, I mean, does it not? That, as I, a, I as made opposed a to just blind casting. I, I've I've made several comments on this when I used to fish BFLs as, as a co angler. And again, I know right. we don't want to go that route towards yeah. big lake fishing, but it is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. It really is. It, it, it bottom line is is even before live scoping, if you're fishing a brush pile, you could get back boated in several different ways yeah and it's not to me if you're fishing as a co-angler it is and if you're watching someone fish and you're watching how they're you know different tactics different baits they're using you're learning yeah it is a learning experience there's guys right now i would love to sign up as a co-angler and get drawn out with on lanier and get i don't care if i make a cast i would Just love to be in the back of the boat 100. 100. i would i would i would i would love to be like with a meal Alex Paul Prince. Marks, who? Alex Prince. Yeah. Alex Prince. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He, he, you know, even Driscoll. Just, I know he likes to shot. All them guys. I, you know, they're probably praying that there's not that many co anglers and they don't get drawn. <laughs> yeah. that. You know them guys are. So, um, let's see. What's up, Justin Warren and Luke Turner? So, why is Danny always in the back of the boat now? I understand. Yeah, was, that's where I'm at. I am a hell of a net man right there. So, uh, Michael Temple's had his first BFL experience right there, and he says uh, he understands now about the co-angler getting the shaft. So it's a real thing. But that's another thing, though, with the electric only. It's a team. Pretty much everybody's a team on that. So you guys work together. I've seen you and Randy. You know, like, a, like we're talking about, we hear we hear y'all coming because of Randy. <laughs> so like, is that, is that Randy? Uh, here comes Randy and Geiger like that. But you work more as a team. Would you ever consider – it growing enough where you might do that, have a co-angler. You have a boat and you have a co-angler and electric only. Would you ever? You got to have two live wells in these smaller boats. That you're talking about co-anglers fishing as co-anglers mm -hmm. and boater. Yeah, that I think that's the biggest issue with that is having to have a bigger live well or two live well, something. Yeah. Yeah. These boats are not designed for handling that kind of weight. Yeah. And plus your batteries and. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, but that's, that's you know that, that makes perfect sense. 
but maybe as they progress, you never know with today's technology. You know, weigh and release, maybe. Way, that might be. Have you ever thought about that? Doing that in electric only? Have, or how about, or how about like the kayak guys do? Measure. So, so I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something pretty cool that uh, Carrie Bell and I. So we both have the, and I, I think there's. You may have. Do you have the new Bubba scale? I have a Bubba scale, but I have the cheaper version, not the one with Bluetooth. Yep. So Carrie Bell and I both have the Bluetooth versions of the Bubba scales. Right. And we were just pre-fishing Latham. It's been probably a month ago now. And it's it's actually, I can't, I don't know if I like it or not yet. So <laughs> we, we started our own little tournament up there. And you got to have good service. So that's one thing that, that it didn't do well with. Right. But it was popping up on my screen on my graph. Carrie Bell just logged a two pounder. Carrie Bell just logged it. I'm like, I've got to do something different. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I've messed something up. Right. That was that of, in the tournament that y'all were no, fishing? Or so that per, this right. was in just practice. We they just went up there and just messed around. We had a little play tournament between oh, okay. both of them. But actually in the tournament, we'll probably do the same thing. So this weekend, well, I'm sure we'll both be running our Bubba scales and we have our own little, yeah. Well, I'd be entering some fake. Weights and they're messing with no, so, 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 so it actually it, it yeah. weighs it goes off so whatever you put whatever you log for your fish to call or whatever it'll tell you that fish weight just logged or just called just did this and I'm like I don't know I don't know how much I like that I here in the like tournament that, but right. it's, it's pretty fun during pre fish well that's and first of all Robert Brett's right there Bubba scales are great because you log it immediately and it's great for keeping up that and I'm glad to see you here. Uh, that's, a, that's a Thursday night, guys. Several of them, guys, Luke Turner, Michael Temples. I'm glad y'all are joining us here on this Tuesday night. You and I were talking before about kind of the pressure of knowing what the other guys got. We were, we were kind of talking about somebody not calling in. You remember when we did that at EBO yeah. at one time and everybody would call in except you because that's where you were sitting back. Remember, I don't have service on Lakeland there. Uh, Remember that? That was was that not that was Blue Ridge? No, it was EBO. We did it in Bald Ridge that one day. We did it in Bald Ridge first term. So year. anybody that's ever fished with me, yeah, here we go. Listen to this. this. No, this. this is serious. So anybody, my wife knows to call me three times if it's an emergency. That's right. I do not answer you my don't. phone. I do not look at my text. I do not. I mean, I've got to watch. So my brother calls me one time and he calls me like back to back. I tell him I'm fishing. He's like, oh, okay. So he calls me like an hour later, a couple of times, and I'm at Carter's Rereg. And I answer the phone. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I'm just seeing if you're catching any fish. And I'm like, dude, I am told you. <laughs> and about that time, I got a bite. Yeah. And my boat's sitting in like 60 foot of water, and I'm fishing like 20 foot of water. And I set the hook, and the phone's in my right hand, and my rod hits my phone. The phone goes in the water and goes to the bottom in 60 foot of water. Okay. And I'm like, so my phone goes in my you know what, Chris? That, the only reason you got that bite is because that phone call. I've always said that 100%. we like that random phone call. It's the phone call bite. I love when yeah. someone gives me some just random. Gets, I always get a bite. And you, yeah. You, <laughs> and both, you hunt? Do you, you deer hunt? I uh, used to. You used to. Not, not, I do. But I know yeah. you do, and I know you do. Is it not always true? I was saying about fishing. The second you got to stand up and pee or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, when you're gonna get busted, yeah. it just it yeah. never fails. So it's very similar to the phone call bite. Uh, Brian Marcusen says it was Mary Alice, so we all remember that because oh. we're all sitting there typing in our weights about eleven o'clock. And wonder what Chris has I was got. More, uh, yeah, wonder I was, what Chris has got. I ain't got no service. I was yeah, no, nah, I was going for that next fish. <laughs> I was looking for that next bite. Interesting idea. Now, would you? Would any, all you guys, y'all, you can answer. Justin, we'll let you get first. Would you like a tournament? where everybody had to log in their weights and you basically could see what everybody had from the get-go, almost like the digital tournament at Hammonds. What would you, how would you feel as far as the fishing pressure on you the rest of that day? Um, Personally. First of all, I'd have to know the people that were fishing it were trustworthy, you know, because right on scale a little bit, you know, there's have to be a picture or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think catch and release could be good for the fishery. Right. And, you know, it would be fun too. Like he said, there's there's pressure involved. Like we see it on the pro tournament circuits, but yeah. until you feel that, you know, right. somebody's catching a two pounder and then a three pounder, you gotta have confidence that you're gonna catch something like that later. So so not to spread so it out. might change your tactics really quick. That's right. You you and I were talking about that. I you know, I used to like I mean used to be back in the day. You we would call everyone, Hey, how's it going? How y'all doing? What do y'all got? I've got to the point now though. 
I don't like anyone. I don't want to know. I just That's get out there. Right. I don't even – very rarely – I don't even want to hear. I go by him. I'm like, oh, here's Chris. I don't want to hear what he's got. <laughs> just, just, I try to find Geiger. Right, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm like, hey, all right, Geiger, got just this. Just to prove that I'm not lying and I'm not embellishing. Read that last comment from Joey Morris right there, Chris. Oh, no service in 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, that was that day. That, I don't have no service, guys. You know I'm going to give you a hard time. Mm. You know I'm going to give you a hard time. But, yeah. that, but still, like, I mean – well, what, what would you think, like, if you had like a live weight tracker? Say, say in y'all's y'all's elite series right there, if you kept a live weight tracker, you got the best of the best fishing in that right there. The pressure that would be putting in your head, you know. I I think it does. It it does do that. I mean, it done that with me just pre fishing. With yeah, Kerry. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, all right, I got to figure something out because he's. I can't let this happen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Carrie. I'm just getting yeah. too competitive for that. You're but, competitive, yeah. absolutely. But um, I th to that point, I think you would almost have to have a marshal, the same as they do. Makes if, sense. if if you were turning all the fish loose, yeah, you would have to I, do that. Have something like what Hammonds does, where you actually have to video it, and somebody has to sit back, approve the approve the uh, weight, approve uh, the video yes. of the fish, and all. Yes. So that kind of an oversight. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. But the pressure of it, though, that that's more I. You know, I want to know how it would make you guys respond mentally to knowing that's just say let's say you're fishing and you see Chris and y'all all three are fishing in a tournament and Chris is racked up 16 pounds by eight o'clock. Just how that would I know I know how it day. makes me I, we used to and Justin may have been the recipient of this. Jake and I back in the day, we would fake a net job and get all high fiving and stuff. We weren't even catching just to get in somebody's head. <laughs> yeah. We caught, I love we it. had a tournament one time. We caught two on a crank. We hadn't had a bite all day. It's like halfway through the day. first by the day. We caught two on a crankbait. I took a picture, sent it to Charlie. What, what? They're scramp were you in that tournament? Too? I don't yeah. know if yeah, they're looking for the crankbait just to mess with people. We would do that. But so it, it messes with me. So I, I wouldn't like, and I, I agree with Chris, that. a marshal would probably have to be to, <laughs> Otherwise, guys can be playing games. Justin said, "I'd have to know who's in the tournament because he yeah. knows guys are going to be doing that's that." That's fantastic. <laughs> Faking that job. Yeah. Faking that. We've job done it more than once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, that I got to remember that one right there. That's a good one like that. All right. So let me ask you this: If we're talking about the gamesmanship, do you ever have rods out on your boat with purposefully wrong lures? Guys coming in in the morning, you guys get into that kind of – I know some guys that do that. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I'm pretty straightforward. I, I tell people what I catch fish on. Yeah. I, so I've always said this. I can tell anybody a bait that I'm catching fish on, and the chances are that that can't be duplicated. Right. No, you can't fish another guy's game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, to me, that's why I always tell everybody. They ask, you know, hey, how would you do this or how would you do that? I say fish what you're conf confident in. Yeah. And how you're confident in fishing it. Okay. Yeah. And and that's that's just my that's just my thoughts on it. I mean, we all have our little baits that are our go to baits. Right. But you know, I got you. a jig is, is my go is one it of my is, go to it baits. Is, it is, it is. But it's not, you know, it's not everybody's. It's not that's right. how I fish it may be different than how someone else fishes it. Yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. So let me ask you guys this since we're getting on a little later in the show. I'm going to start with you, Justin. Tell me where you see electric-only fishing going in the future, and if you could make any changes to make it better, what would they be? That requires some thought. Yeah, and all yeah. you guys, yeah, I know that's a deep one, <laughs> but all you guys, oh, yeah, Brian said, Chris always told me dot, 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 after. <laughs> after. He, yeah, this is what I called him on, after. But and, and if you have to think about any of you guys, like where do you see electric only fishing going? Because it has come a long way in the last 15, 20 years. What's the future for it? So I guess for me, I mean, I, I think we've we've expanded now to north and the south division. The hard part of is is outside the state, right? Mm -hmm. That's the next frontier. That's so you almost need We've man, we put a lot of time and planning and <laughs> phone calls and we had weekly phone calls for what three months. Yep. Um, just just all this planning, working for spot working with sponsors, all this stuff that goes into it. And you almost need someone that already has that platform. Right. 
like a BASS or a FLW or a someone that already has that capability, no different than a kayak tournament. Much right? harder to start from ground up than it is. What you're it, there's a lot of cost involved. There's a lot of, um, and then and then you get other people outside the state that are interested. But then when you talk about what buy-in is and yeah, all that stuff, then they're like, oh, well, we're you know we're used to, we're, we're paying forty dollars to fish a tournament, right? It, it, you can't expand that way i mean it, it, there's just too much cost involved i mean the yeah. club club has to have i have a, a, a um business yes bank account that right. we have to keep money in. i mean geiger has sheet spreadsheets that he keeps i mean it's can you keep track of all the spreadsheets yeah <laughs> oh, I, bet. I yeah. bet absolutely so you're saying just logistics logistics that's good that's that's the, but i i think that we do have a strong a very strong um prevalence here in georgia yes it's outside of georgia getting that outreach getting this to grow um in other states and and then connecting the dots right yeah but i i think for now we're going to continue to grow and um even we talked about an efs i mean if we get to where you know we could even add a, a third division um i don't know you'd have to start staggering your tournaments because we can only right. do so many, but I mean, it, it takes a lot of brain work. It does. It does. It does. It, well, the schedule, and one of the biggest things that we've got into now, and it, really it's even affected me perfectly because I try to fish big lakes and do the electric lakes is right. Who's, who's going to come out with the first schedule. There's 14, 15 John boats and you can't, yes. it's not like Lanier where you can go have 10, 20 boat tournaments or clubs on the lake at the same time. You, got that many you, can, you yeah. can't have two tournaments at Latham unless they're, you know, five boats a piece. So right. you got to get your schedule out and then plan around. I think uh, Eli self has a spreadsheet he put out there that kind of helps the clubs see where everyone is on the different dates, but there's a lot of planning and dodging all the lakes. And that's the challenge as the clubs continue to grow is, is there enough waters? And I think that's why you've seen the guys expanding to the big lakes because we're running out of dates and yeah. lakes to fish. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. By the way, thank you, Eli, for that spreadsheet. Yeah. Eli's a good helpful. dude. He really is. He's very actually, good dude. He's a pretty good golfer now. You notice yeah. when you watch his videos? Yeah. Guys, I think he was going down to South Georgia somewhere for a tournament. Tournament, now, so. yeah. He'll probably give up fishing. He's going to be a pro golfer. Right <laughs> I don't there. think he'll give up fishing. Yeah, I don't know about that. Right, but – yeah, no, I think I'm agreeing with, with Geiger. I think the biggest thing is, is all of us clubs working together. Um, Which sometimes can be hard. It can, but we, I think we've done a really good job. I mean, we, we work with Donnie. Donnie's the oldest running club. We try to dodge his schedule. Right. Um, we try to do opposite weekends. He fishes every other weekend, and our tournaments will follow the weekends before. Right. Uh, Jonathan's got Sunday Trail, SOS. Um, you got Extreme. Worked with Dusty on that. Dusty had his. If we're using that as kind of a pre-fish, his kind of mirrors the North Division. Right. Um, you've got SWAT. You've got EBO. Joey Morse runs EBO. He's a pretty Merrick good dude. He's is, all right. Is, I, mean, he I, was about, I was talking about Joey. Yeah. Yeah. When I said um, he's all right, because I fish that. So I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't saying that about Merrick. I was yeah. talking about Joey. When yeah. I said he's all right. You got Jesse's trail, whether it's match fishing. That's I think right. he's coming back I, in 25. That was fun. Yeah. That was. actually was fun. Did you fish it any? I fished one. Well, I fished with him because he needed a partner down at Hard Labor. And we got beat by actually Brian Marcuse. And then I'm going to ask you a question in a second, Brian. But that was fun. Just a blind draw. I thought that was a, it's a pretty good concept. You know, mm -hmm. one and done, man. I mean, if you're out, you're out. So interesting, but it was fun. Um, Brian, right there, because you were talking about is EFS open to anyone or is there a qualifying system? No, it's open to anyone. So we did have a qualifying system um, where, well, the, actually, that was just the first year, really. It's really invitational. I invitational. It yeah, it was invitational the first year. And the second year. And the second year. But we year. reached out a little bit more. We had, there's, I mean, there's been a lot of turnover. It's, it's not for everyone. I mean, right. I feel that due to the higher – and this is with any tournament. When you raise the entry fee and the stakes, you got guys that are more serious, and they feel – you almost feel obligated to put 
the time in the practice. If you don't, you're going to get beat. And yes. unless you just don't mind donating, I mean, I'd rather go donate for a $60 tournament than 150. And I think that, and I get it, guys don't have the time to practice. Um, but we've had turnover, you know, people have for life obligations yeah, that right, come up. Right. And so the last two years we've opened it up and anyone can fish. Okay. What do you think about Michael Temple's comment right there? I think a lot of the smaller clubs need to combine with each other to make a better trail plus higher payouts. Too many clubs running eight to nine boats a tournament. I guess that all has to do with personalities as well. You know, some guys like that. They don't want to be a part. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of a tough one. It is a tough one. I mean, do you, you know, everyone likes to win. You know? That's true. And so, you know, if you have one big tournament that's got 35 boats, there's only going to be so many guys that say, Hey, I won a tournament. And I mean, you know, it, you get the different personalities and you've got different agendas or people don't want to, you know, go fish Juliet from ball ground right. or the yeah. guys down in Macon don't want to come up and fish Lanier or whatever reason. And so you get, everyone comes up with the regional lakes, you know, there's South Georgia clubs, there's North Georgia clubs. Right. And I like, I personally like fishing them all. I mean, I, even with our schedule, cause we, we do, I get it. And even over the years I used to, I mean, that's all I ever fished for, eight years is high voltage. I, every other weekend we're driving down on the other side of I-20, but it's brutal coming home now from there. It used to have to be like that back in right. you know, 15, yeah. 20 years ago, but I still don't mind. I, you know, you like Luke, Lucas or high falls, or I've only been in Juliet once, but I like jumping around. I don't want to go every single weekend, but yeah. I don't mind once a month going like differently. That. What do you think about it? Yeah, I man, I, I feel like Geiger does. I mean, I like fish some of the lakes up North. Um, Latham, it's a good ride for me, especially now I live down south a little ways. Um, but, yeah, the lakes up here are different than the lakes I fish down south. And, I mean, even Lanier. I mean, I if I lived up here, I'd probably fish Lanier every week. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's such a it. change from what I like, from what I do on a regular basis. Um, I just like to be challenged. Okay, that's so, good. I got that. I think um, one of the things and that this was popping up when y'all were talking about trying to do the interstate thing. Yeah, I saw that's what I was going. Working class outdoors, which I have not seen your name on here before. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, we have four clubs in North Carolina. I did an NC championship tournament back in February for everyone. And that's good. That's awesome. That is good. That's very good. A lot of the, especially the farther you get up north, a lot of these states have specific laws about taking a boat into their uh, state or out of their state because of like things like muscles or, you know, moving species around of something that might be, you know, invasive. I know, I think when you get up into like Maryland, Maryland, yeah. And all that, those yeah. guys, there's a lot of yeah. big electric clubs up there, but to try to rig something up like that is very hard because boat inspections and yeah. stuff like that. So there's always logistics. I think yeah, up there all. they can only choose like three lakes to put their boat into for the year, and they can't muscles. fish any others. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, if, what if you're just traveling through the state, like in a bass boat, and you're going up upstate New York, and you go through Maryland? Are they kind of are they inspecting? Or I, no? you know, what? I haven't. I just, I, didn't, I don't uh, know, but that. there are states like that. You have to have a boat inspection on before you put your boat in the water. So it's at the lake. It's yeah. not traveling. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I didn't get that. Yeah. Before we lose this comment, working class outdoors shoot me a message on facebook i'd like to talk to you more chris gayton yep. uh, yeah chris yep. gayton yep or i would if you, love you to that, talk to you more yeah if you get that you can just hit fish north georgia and i'll make sure you get it yeah so i think i think the inner I th at least in the south i think getting the north carolina tennessee alabama oh, it, georgia kind of awesome. would be good would be absolutely good for you guys so yeah uh pull up it. evan's comment right above that this is my first season fishing the electric series. Did bad in one and good in the other, but I love it and I recommend it to anyone because it's something different and going to all these different lakes and figuring them out is what I love about the sport. And that's, listen, that's that's the attitude to have. I mean, and again, I, I like it because I'm not on y'all's level of angling. You guys are far superior to me, but I like I told you, I like the camaraderie, seeing the guys. I just think that's something you get in electric only you don't get. Uh Okay, he's on Instagram Sweet. too. So you look him up. Working class Perfect. outdoors. We'll make sure we remember that. Blake and Jay Yarder are the reigning Southeast champions, I believe. I miss those days. So I don't know what I guess they used yeah, to have those kind of tournaments or whatever, but um 
I think that would be probably the next logical step, though, if you could get a Georgia, Alabama, or Georgia, North Carolina, and, yeah, and flip so, it each year. Maybe you know the top four that in their championship and met y'all's championship, and just kind of you know. For me, I would love. I mean, there was some someone posted the other day. We've been talking back and forth about Tennessee. Now, most of their tournaments are night tournaments, um, but. I've uh, been talking to them about going up there and possibly fishing some of their tournaments too, just to kind of meet everyone. And yeah, yeah, I think that's cool for me. That's what I love to do. I love to talk to people. I like to get out and meet people. I like to travel, fish different water, fish water. I never fished yeah. before. Um, yeah. I, if I if you had to make a choice, cause you fish both, you could only fish one way the rest of your life, electric or big lakes. That's hate a tough say, one. I hate to say it, but I'd probably go big lake. There's just more opportunity. I get that. I get that. I was <laughs> I was curious to see. I, I went if there that. was a couple years in there, 14, 15, and 16, I only fished maybe one electric tournament a year. Yeah. I, uh, and then when Randy and I got hooked up to start because he fished with his brother for a while. Right. His brother had a stroke, and then he was and we, we and we'd always fished together just here and there, but got to you got to have it's good to have a consistent part that's the other thing if you can get someone i mean it sometimes it's tough to mesh with somebody you can go through a bunch of partners where you find someone that you work well with yeah and how long have y'all been fishing together randy is in general or since we've done since this? you like as partners i think 2017 joey started ebo when it was just open tournaments wasn't a trail yet and that yeah. was when we kind of kicked out we'd jump in a couple big lake tournaments here and there just in my bass boat over the years but we started consistently yeah. in 2017 i don't think i've ever seen you fish without randy or unless jake i, I fished with jake aiken for years i still fish with him in the big boat stuff yeah. but him and i fished electric for years but like I, i've always it just seems in my mind just remembering back it's always you been you and randy so that is a testament because that's we're going to what seven eight years now mm -hmm. like that so i've always remembered that so um i tell you what we're getting a little bit late in the game right here guys i mean anything else we need to cover or on the electric only side, y'all got any announcements you guys need to make or anything? Or... Y'all good? No, you all I good? Okay. Good. Well, listen, if anybody, if anybody uh, wants to come out and join us at DFS. Yeah, we still got a couple out. spots open, both divisions. Both if divisions. someone wants to jump in. Okay, there you go. So it is open. We did have a question come in real quick, so we'll hit Gabe's question. Have y'all ever fished at night with a one-ounce spinnerbait, just one single number seven Colorado blade? These big Coosa River spots love them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would say Lanier spots late, love like them I say, too. Lake Lanier, they're throwing that right there. And I imagine Alatuna too. Alatuna. Alatuna, yeah. that's yeah. got to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, your answer absolutely is yes. Uh, any fishing for charity toy drives? Um, I tell you what, we uh, since you asked that, I know that, it's kind of an announcement behind the scenes. Big Ban uh, Big Shanty Bassmasters always does a Toys for Tots tournament on Lake Alatoona, but we are going to help them throw one on Lake Lanier. Uh, I believe the, the date might be the first week of December. I might be off on that. We haven't really announced anything official yet, but there will be a Toys for Tots tournament on Lake Lanier uh in december so that that'll be a big lake tournament i don't know about any of the electric and if you got an electric boat you can come jump in i mean fish the big lake so um but that's something that's in the work so i will keep you abreast of that uh on the show so other than that guys i tell you what uh for our first tuesday nighter here i think uh it's been it's been a pleasure having you guys on there and especially that i've known you guys and kind of seeing what you guys are taking the sport to the next level with y'all series you're really up in the game and it's um we keep all of it. Oh, we've got another question real quick. So, you ever fish R.I. Harris or a.k.a. Lake Weedowee? Wadawi. 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 Yes, I fish, it, I fish it a good bit. I got a camper down okay, there in Wadawi. Okay, so, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, Gabe, you want to hit Mike up there for any for any uh, hints on that. So, I can't pronounce crap. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the worst. <laughs> so, anyway, so appreciate you guys coming. And I, I want to, you know, from all of us here, I hope your trail has some success. And then, of course, I get to see some of you guys throughout the year you know, with EBO and stuff like that. So, but it's always interesting to watch your tournaments and see who wins. We still keep up with it, you know, like uh, what do they have? What do they have? What do they have? So, uh, and that's for all the electric things, but especially y'all series. So you guys are really stepping the game up to have like the ultimate, you know, electric only series in Georgia and y'all are doing a great job running it. And so, Thank you. Uh, Oh, Terry you. Adams. Great, great job. Terry's awake. <laughs> Terry is up past his bedtime right there. So, 
that's so that's Lake Latham Terry right there. So, yeah. Um, anyway, guys, I appreciate you joining us tonight for our first Tuesday night or next week. Uh, we are going to do crappy. I got some crappy guys coming in, so we're going to be talking about crappy fishing next Tuesday night. And if any of you guys are interested in the no uh, sonar, no forward facing sonar tournament that's going to be happening April first through the fourth on Lake Lanier. Alan Brooks, the guy, the mastermind behind that, will be in studio this Thursday night. I'm going to try to get him to drop the names of the guys that are fishing it. We're going to talk more about that. And uh, he's laughing. Gabe's laughing at me. <laughs> hey, that's the way it is. Um, I can tell you that I've been told who's coming, and it is just an absolute. I've told these guys some of the names. Hope he drops all of them you know, Thursday night, but we're going to talk about that. But it is the best of the best that's going to be coming to our state fishing lately. Near. So tune in on Thursday night's live. Well, if you got any questions about that for a smooth 5K, hey, listen. Pay to play. Pay to play. It, whether it's 150 in an electric tournament for whatever you got or 5,000 for 125 or 300, whatever it ends up. Hey, good odds right there. So we appreciate you guys. Join us uh, this Thursday night. If not, we'll see you next Tuesday night with a crappy episode. You guys have a safe week, and we'll see you later. Thank you all.